of September the 11th, 2017, was in my opinion a very historic week. I'm not referring to the anniversary of 9-11, I'm referring to two other events, the launch of the iPhone X and the grand finale of the Cassini Huygens spacecraft. Now, the launch of the iPhone X, oh, it's up there, marked 10 years of iPhone, but it also marked 10 years of in, in, um, investment, of development, and of excitement. Looking back 10 years ago, few of any people can imagine that we'd be so dependent on those gadgets. The second event was the grand finale of the Cassini Huygens spacecraft. Now, this marked the end of 20 years of space exploration and the end of one of the most successful spacecraft to date. Both of these events were equally important to me, being an Apple fan and someone interested in space and rocket science. But unfortunately, this second event isn't as well known. Considering if the same amount of investment that went into the iPhone, and really smartphones and applications in general, that same amount of investment went into space exploration, where we could have been nowadays. We should, actually no, let me correct myself, we must invest more in space exploration for a multitude of reasons, but the most important of which is to ensure the survival of our own species. The expression, the sky is the limit, really does not apply anymore. There is no limit. Well, except to the speed of light, and that government agencies are underfunded, and have budget cuts, and really isn't a general interest in society about space exploration. These two factors could be leading our species to extinction. Now to actually understand where we could have been and where our planet could have been nowadays, we need to look back at the heat of the Cold War, the Cuban Missile Crisis. Back then, we were so close to a nuclear apocalypse, and judging how close we were back then, it's quite likely we'll be just as close in the future, or even past the breaking point, taking into account the rising tensions between the world's three superpowers, the US, Russia, and China, and with the growing nuclear threat from North Korea, it's not an impossibility. Yes, the best course of action will be to prevent a nuclear catastrophe from happening, but if we're not able to prevent it, well then we have to continue without Earth. We have to continue off of Earth, without our blue marble. And that would require investing more in space exploration. And let's say we avoid, we're lucky enough to avoid the nuclear apocalypse. Yeah, well then we have the danger of global warming and climate change. By 2030, there'll be 40% more demand for fresh water than there actually is. Humans kind of need water to survive. Um, Cape Town, it's already running out of water and many cities are set to fall in its wake. Our planet is running out of resources. Global warming and climate change are causing droughts and famines across the world. And with the problem of overpopulation, all these effects are taking its toll. Of course, it would be preferable to prevent any more damage and to fix the problems of, the, of global warming, climate change, and overpopulation. But we do need to consider that we fail. That we fail in solving all these problems. What do we do then? Do we just go extinct? Or do we go beyond Earth? Do we leave it behind. Fine, let's say we avoid a nuclear apocalypse and these threats. Well, then we have the threat from outer space, really. The first one, which is more tangible and actually a bit more likely, is that of an asteroid impact. Remember the dinosaurs? A big asteroid killed them. Now, asteroids always hit the Earth, but most of them are so small that they're nothing more than shooting stars. Larger <coughs> asteroid impacts, however, do happen, and some are large enough to cause mass extinction events. Yes, we could install a protection system against these asteroids, but if we fail in installing it in time, we could wake up with a, a large Armageddon over our heads. But if we invest more in space exploration, A, we'd be able to prevent an asteroid impact, and B, even if we're not able to, even if Earth and all of its humans are destroyed, there'll be humans elsewhere in our solar system, and maybe even, even in the universe. And like that, our species will go on. The next threat from outer space is that of aliens. 
In one of my favorite books, The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, the Earth is demolished to make way for a kind of space highway. Yes, I know, it is a novel and it is kind of a joke, but the threat of extraterrestrials is real. Considering what the colonists did to the Native Americans in the New World, who is to say that a more advanced and more developed alien extra extraterrestrial species encountering us will not just massacre or enslave us? It's quite likely. And really, in this case, the only way to prevent this from happening would be to invest more in space exploration. But now to actually understand what we should do for the future, what we must do in terms of investing, we need to look back at where we could have been nowadays if some things had been different in the past. The height of the space race, 1969. The moon landings had just happened, and the Americans had come up with all sorts of <coughs> amazing and novel ideas for bases on Mars and on the moon. These <coughs> ideas were quickly killed off, forgotten, or left for later, as the focus changed to lower orbit. The Russians, well, they gave up on their moonshot, as their lunar rocket, the N1, in all of its four launches, uh, failed catastrophically. But experts say that if a, if a fifth launch of this N1 rocket would have happened, well, then it's quite likely it would, it, would, it would have succeeded. And then, if it would have succeeded, it's quite likely the Soviets would have landed on the moon, and that would have set the bar higher, Mars and beyond. And by now, it's quite likely we've been so much, like, so much more beyond Earth than we are currently, and there'd be a general culture of investing more in space exploration. If just one la more launch had happened, really. Now, let's quickly define what I mean by investing more in space exploration. Now, the first one is actually giving funds to governments and private space agencies. The second point is educating more young children about how interesting space is and about the future to actually, you know, encourage them to become <coughs> the workforce for this new dream. And last, but not least, we need to create more interest in society. Because society is actually the thing that's gonna that's the big push in everything. Now, in terms of investing more in space agencies, maybe we shouldn't invest any more in government agencies. They are restricted by governments, their funds aren't constant, and well, there isn't a lot of competition between them, which isn't a good thing. On the other hand, Private space agencies, well, there are lots of them, and there are even more of them. This increases competition. And because of this, the, these agencies want to get beyond, like, Moon and the Mars, and Mars first, and also for a lower cost. In fact, to actually examine this point of lower cost, let's examine two famous <coughs> rockets. How many of you here have heard of the Falcon 9? You had a few of you. Now, Falcon 9 by SpaceX, a private, comp uh, private space company, it costs about $62 million to launch. Seems expensive, right? It's actually quite cheap for a rocket. As another rocket, which is a teensy little bit more, uh, more powerful, the Delta IV Heavy, by the US government, costs $400 million. 400, do you see the difference? Now let's move on to the point of education. In school, we learn a lot about history, and it is important. It is obviously important to understand our past and where we come from. But we should also learn about the future and about space exploration. Children in school should be, you know, inspired to actually work in, in this domain and actually, you know, give these <coughs> dreams, make these, turn these dreams into reality, so they're just not not just on paper, but actually real, so that we actually expand and ensure our survival. My dream is to see humans on Venus, because at about 50 kilometers above the surface, conditions are very Earth-like. Gravity is like Earth, pressure is like Earth, and temperature is like Earth. NASA has proposed floating colonies there on Venus, and I have come up with a, a hypothetical mission, which would examine its atmosphere and see how feasible these ideas are. Yes, it is hypothetical, but I dream of one day, maybe in fact, creating a mission like this. Because we really need to go beyond Earth. We can't just stay here forever. And finally, 
we need to promote more interest in society in general about space exploration. Last week, I was at the Slovak Organization for Space Activities, and there I saw how they launched Slovakia for a satellite, the SK Cube, and all the new developments they're coming up with. But one of the major struggles when launching the SK Cube was funding. The government wouldn't give them a lot of resources, and there wasn't an interest in society to actually give donations. So to, they had to go to all sorts of different companies to actually get funds. And it's a shame that there isn't any interest, like few, a little interest in society, because they're propelling us forward. They're ensuring our survival. And yet, <coughs> we're sticking behind because there is an interest. So we really need to create more interest. There are already people who their heroes aren't Ronaldo or Messi, but people like Elon Musk, who are actually propelling us forward, and on the plus side, ensuring our species' survival. People like that should be the people who people are inspired by. And now, let's quickly consider what do we want our species to become. How many of you here have watched WALL-E? It was my favorite movie when I was small, and I know my mom was completely terrorized by it. Sorry, mom. Now, in WALL-E, the Earth is abandoned. It's a garbage dump of our species. It's a fossil of what we've done. Is this what we want Earth to become? A fossil of a species who destroyed it and killed themselves in the process. Or do we want Earth to become something else? Do we want to live in the future in a thriving galactic society based on many different galaxies if we develop warp drives? And our descendants, instead of packing their bags for the beach on Earth, will be packing their bags for another galaxy or another planet. So invest more in space exploration and dare to get an interplanetary passport like Starman. Thanks for your attention.